okay guys welcome to philosophy online lecture today we'll be talking about critical thinking and uh, uh we'll be looking about various aspects under this now first off uh, what is critical thinking critical thinking has to do with careful reasoning that is directed to a particular goal a careful reasoning critical thinking has to do with observation it has to do with analyzing and then coming to a conclusion on a particular thought or idea it is not just thinking it is it deals with good reasoning and reasoning is an aspect of critical thinking now we should note that it is not all thinking that are reasoning reasoning is more of a conscious aspect to you know ruminate on certain ideas and so, it, it, by thinking about something and not be conscious, it's it, uh, but reasoning has to do with a conscious aspect of thinking, a, a very, very deep uh, reflection and activity of the mind. So, that is what uh, the, on the basis of uh, what critical thinking is. Now, having understood that, we are going to move into... Uh, disagreement what uh, disagreement means now disagreement in uh, has to do with arguments I you know arguments in philosophy in uh, logic is not a dispute it is a statement that has a predicate and a conclusion uh, it claims that we lay uh, ideas that we put forward based on ideas that we've known before so that is arguments now uh, when we argue the, we always have a disagreement like a counterclaim now when we disagree then we seek to prefer solutions the major point of this is that we're always seeking uh, to discover the truth in every claims in every argument now so in uh, disagreements, in critical thinking, we have four basic aspects of disagreement. The first one is uh, the factual disagreement. And the factual disagreement has to do with disagreement that arise from a statement of facts. St uh, a statement of facts. Disagreement that arise from a statement of facts. So that is on factual disagreement. Verbal disagreement is the second one. Now, verbal disagreement has to do with disagreement or based on this uh, discussion or exchange of uh, words now the third one which is evaluative disagreement is divided into three parts the first is ethical evaluation the second is aesthetic evaluation and the third one is pragmatic evaluation now you know evaluation has to do with review or uh, and uh, a total look of a work or an idea now an ethical evaluation what what do we mean by ethical evaluation ethical evaluation has to do with trying to find out the rightness or wrongness of an activity you know ethics has to do with understanding what is right and what is wrong so in ethical evaluation we try to find out claims that are right or claims that are wrong or activities that are right or activities that are wrong now aesthetics which is the second one under evaluative disagreement you know aesthetics has to do with beauty so aesthetics uh, in under evaluative disagreement has to do with judgment of beauty and taste well uh, how do we claim that this thing is beautiful what makes uh, what make us certain that this food is delicious so it has to do with judgment of beauty and taste now the third one under evaluative disagreement is pragmatic evaluation and this is a practical evaluation of something you want to put into test now the last one under disagreement you know i said there are four basic aspects of disagreement the last one is interpretative disagreement and this has to do deal with serious arguments so that is that on disagreements 
in critical thinking. Now, another aspect of critical thinking, which is very, very important, is language. You know, la- language is a means of communication. And uh, if you want to think, you have to think in a particular language. And that language is best if it's the language that you understand. That language is best if it's the language that you understand. Now, in your thoughts or thinking, understanding of language matters. You can only think well in the language that you understand. And this is what will guide your thoughts and also your utterance. Now, uh, having understood what language is, we, we can also see that language is an important part of thinking. Now, there's what we call the emotive language. Now, the emotive language has to do with language that could uh, affect emotions. So, uh, there are some words like, for example, when you call people ego, ego, you understand, you are trying to degrade the people who come from the from a part of legal state. So it's it could affect that person's emotion, like saying somebody is subegu. You understand, it's a language on its own, but it could affect emotions. So those are emotive language. For example, uh, when uh, the word negro was in use before it was banned. Uh, Negro was seen by the civil rights movement as uh, what uh, dis- constitutes dis- discrimination. So the word Negro was abolished and instead the word Black was used. Now, so language is very, very important in critical thinking. The way a statement could be made in English language if it's, it is interpreted in Yoruba or in Igbo language or in Hausa, it could mean something slightly different. And this could uh, uh, lead to misunderstanding. So language is a very, very important part of what's critical thinking. And we should note that we have a different uh, form of language. We have the sign language. We have the written language. And then we have the oral language. Now, uh, well, like I said earlier, we also have the emotive language. Now, like uh, still on that emotive language, you know, like we always do have choice of food or clothes. The, we should always also have the choice of words because the choice of word used in an argument uh, uh, can impact the meaning that is conceived from that argument. So that that is that on language on that critical thinking. Now the next one we are looking at is uh, the laws of thought. Now laws of thought are uh, laws that guide a valid thought process. Uh, it is what justify a valid infer- inference. Now, an inference is a type of argument, a, a, a claims that we make. Now, what guides our thoughts, the laws in which we could use to guide a thought to be either valid or invalid, is uh, what we call the laws of thought. Now, uh, this is under logic. Now, in laws of thought, we have three main laws of thought. The first one is the law of identity. The law of identity states that an object is what it is. Now, if you say the rain is falling, and you look outside and the rain is actually falling, that is, the laws of identity states that that rain is falling because you look at it and it says it is running. So, it is the law of identity, that is, the object is what it is. The second law is the law of excluded middle. Now, the law of ex- excluded middle states that every statement is either true or false. There is no middle ground. Every statement is either true or false. That is the law of excluded middle. 
from the name you should understand what it is now the last one is the law of contradiction now the law of con contradiction states that no proposition can be both true and not true you can't say something a is uh, both a and b a will be a and cannot be b so there is no contradiction there shouldn't be contradiction so no proposition can be both true and not true so that is that on the laws of thoughts now moving further we're talking we're going to talk about uh, arguments what uh, arguments mean now uh, arguments in logic has to do with just one person while in ordinary language arguments requires two or more people now there's a need for us to differentiate between argumentative discourse and non-argumentative discourse argumentative discourse are uh, propositions that uh, we make are claims that we make a statement with a predicate and a conclusion we shouldn't mix this mix this or convince this with a non-argumentative discourse that people uh, do and call it an argument now an argument is a type of inference that is, is, is a type of statement or proposition that uh, we make now we make inference when we lay claims on a new piece of knowledge based on what we've already known now let me explain this when you say uh, all lasso students are brilliant now you that is a conclusion now before you get to that conclusion there is uh, there are premises you know and it is those premises that makes you arrive to that conclusion so when we say uh, an inference is making claims on a new piece of knowledge based on what we've already known we are saying that we are making those that new conclusion based on the promise premises which we've already known like the premise could be the lasso as the best lecturers and uh, now the second premise is best lect uh, lecturers teaches good students to become best students so when we make that conclusion that lasso has the best students it is based on those previous knowledge that we've already known now an example is uh, that a man is a bachelor means he is unmarried that a man is a bachelor that somebody michael is a bachelor it's a new statement but that new state bachelor means someone who is unmarried based on the previous knowledge that we've known that someone who is a bachelor is unmarried means that michael is a bachelor and that michael is unmarried i hope we get that now uh so in understanding an inference an inference consists of two parts a new piece of knowledge and the one that we know before which the new piece of knowledge is based on now let me read this an inference that is treatable in logic is technically called an argument that is an inference in logic is called an argument and an argument and an argument is a group of propositions now those propositions could be either true or false now those uh, the conclusion of an argument is actually followed from other propositions which are regarded as providing evidence of the conclusion and those uh, ones that are regarded as providing evidence are called the premises why the final position is called the conclusion now how do we recognize the premise uh what are the premise indicator we have a uh, since we have a uh, because we have a uh, in as much as and so on you know that there are statements that are trying to bring about other that other and uh, uh, statements now uh the conclusion indicator we have in there for we have uh, we have a uh, we may in fact that uh so 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 
So and and that is it on uh, the first part of this lecture. And the next one we are going to be looking at fallacies. Thank you so much.